morning and welcome back to our sustainable journey. I'm Steve. Today, this morning, we are going to feed some chickens. Um, we, uh, we have about 300 chickens in various places. And so I will show you each of the setups we have and how we feed all 300 of them every single day, multiple times a day. Um, they eat a lot of food. So we start with the brooder in the garage. So this has about 30 chickens in it. I actually haven't counted. Um, I actually haven't counted any of our chickens. So, they're all in here. We have the lights off at night so we can kind of train them on the darkness. Um, but you see we've got water and a feeder set up. So I think I've shown the feeder before. It's just a five gallon bucket with holes in the bottom. So what you do is feed goes in the top and then it sifts out the bottom. Um, and you can, we'll shake it a little bit to get more food out, but that's all it takes. And they've got their water. Sometimes they go on that side of the brooder. And so we set up these boxes so that they can get their way back. So we could shake the, the feeder. There's their water. We have a fan set up because they can get warm in here during the day. Um, this is an old dog cage that we have in here. And what we do with that is when we get new ones out of the brooder. So you can see there's some smaller ones here. Those are just probably two or three weeks old. Um, so every two or three weeks, we're every, well, not every two, every three weeks, um, new chicks hatch. And so we, uh, or the incubator, we pull them out of the incubator, we put them in here. After a couple of days, once they have their feathers and they're a little bit more acclimated with walking around and food and stuff like that, we put them in here. And that protects them from the other ones attacking them um, just out of curiosity or what have you. And so... We have another one of these cages that we're going to put into the barn when we move these bigger guys, because we're going to move them this weekend or next weekend to the barn where we have 150 chickens. Um, and that way they have a safe place. Um, we'll, we'll pull out, you know, one of these gaps, which would be enough for them to get in there, possibly two. Um, but it's too small for the other chickens to get to them. So they have this safe space where they can get in. Um, get protection um, and feel secure um, and know that they're not going to get attacked because the pecking order is a real thing and they are going to be at the bottom of it because they're the newbies so we'll be doing that um, probably this weekend possibly next depending on timing because we have to do the we get our our meat birds are going to be processed this week um, so what we do is we just have their feed we pull it out of the gravity wagon. I'll show you that in just a second. And we fill up these tubs to kind of carry them around um, where we need them. So, and we go through about 50 to 70 pounds of feed a day between all the chickens. So, all right, this is the gravity wagon. So, it's a wagon in our shed. I'll show you a side view. Um, over the weekend, or I guess Monday. Yeah, Monday. Not over the weekend. It was Monday. We got 6,000 pounds of feed delivered. Um, and this will last us about two to three months. Depending on how many birds we're processing at the time. Um, but yeah, that's what we store it in. We store it inside so it stays dry. Um, and we've got plenty of room inside here. So, 6,000 pounds of feed. This will be going down. Okay, so this is kind of what it looks like. You've seen these if you've driven into farm country and it's a gravity wagon. So what happens is you just open this door and it goes down and then we fill our buckets from here. So that is the gravity wagon we use to store the feed for all these chickens. Hi buddy. Yeah, you saw a fox yesterday, that was really exciting.
All right, so now we will go check out the chickens in the pasture. All right, these are, well, this is the pasture area. Um, there's about 100, 150 birds out here. We keep them, ah, this fence, there. Um, we keep them in these tractors to protect them from um, any of the predators that are out here. We've seen foxes, coyotes, raccoons, and they will all love to get in here and tear these guys apart. So we have a fence around the whole perimeter, and then we also keep them in these tractors um, because those animals would love to eat these guys. Oh, they actually didn't even eat all your food yesterday. Nice. So, opens up like that. Their feed goes in that. There's a couple of those bell waters. I don't know if you can see the red ones. Here's there's water, so we can just fill them from the top. And that's, um, we feed these guys two to three times a day, depending on what time, um, how close we are to processing and how much they're growing. Now they've slowed down a little bit. They're getting processed next week. Um, so they're basically full size or almost full size. So, and they're eight weeks old, which is ridiculous for these birds. They grow fast and they don't even develop all their feathers. Um, so we're not too happy with, with this type of bird. These are Cornish cross, um, these are your standard, this is your standard chicken that you're going to get at the store. We wanted to start with these. It's a good training bird, testing bird to see how well it does out in our area. They do, did it, they did well, um, but we would just rather something take a little bit longer and be a little bit smarter of a bird or better of a bird, I guess. These ones are not very bright um, and they're very lazy. They don't really move from where they're at because they develop so fast, they're just fat and lazy. And it's not their fault, it's just the way they're bred. They're bred specifically to be that way. Um, so you don't have to put them out on pasture, you can just keep them in a barn and you'll grow big fat chickens. And you can make, it's more profitable for the big, big ag, so to speak. So we feed them, similar to see these tubs. So we just have some feed. We scoop it out, put it in the um, that PVC pipe cut in half that we feed them from. Give them all water, and then we come back in the summertime, um, like it is now. We'll come back every two hours, check their water, give them more water um, because it's hot. They have shade. You can see there's there's tin covering um, both of them, but it still gets ridiculously hot for them. So we try and make sure they have fresh water all throughout the day and feed if they're really needy, but we usually just give them feed in the morning and at night. Um, that way it doesn't heat them up during the day while they're digesting. So, yeah. so we'll feed them now. This is our livestock trailer. I was cleaning it out yesterday because one of the requirements when we bring our chickens to the butcher next week is that they be off food for 24 hours before processing. And we don't have an area we can put them where there's no food. Because um, it's all pasture area where the barn has food and I'm not moving food out away from those chickens. Um, so we're just going to put them in here for a day. Um, I'm going to put some sort of wire mesh to protect them. And then we'll, we'll set up waters in here as well for them. Um, so that they are protected and fed, and, or not fed, but watered. Um, in the 24 hours before they're processing. And the reason we are not processing them ourselves is an Illinois rule. So we can sell farm processed chicken locally, off a farm, off, on the farm, not off farm, on farm. So if our customers wanted to come out to the farm, we could sell them um, chicken that we process here but a lot of our customers are far away for our eggs and stuff. And so we figured, you know what? Let's just get them processed at a USDA facility. They'll process them all up, um, put them in bags and do the whole shebang. Um, this first round, we'll see how that goes. 
And if it goes well, we'll do it again. If not, we'll just process them on farm. Like, we can do that. That's fine. People can come to us. Easier for me. Um, but that's why we have to follow all these weird rules and do all that stuff so that they're the way the processor wants them. So that'll be next Tuesday or Wednesday they get processed. So. Okay, so we had about 30, 35 in the garage, another 100 to 150 out in the pasture. And then we have our coop, which is just kind of our special needs chickens. Um, so that is a bantam. So they're like half size. Those two are just regular chickens. The, the one that's closest to us, the, the red one, um, she's actually blind in one eye. And so we treat this as like our special needs coop. Um, because those ones would get absolutely eaten alive um, if we put them with the other chickens in the barn. So we keep them out here to kind of keep them protected. I mean, they can, they can roam around and stuff. Um, and we move this fence once the ground starts looking like that so they get fresh grass. We've put it around here and they'll, they'll eat all this up in, in like a month. So that'll be the next move for them now that they've completely eaten all of this up. We'll move the fence and we can expand it. We, I have a few extra sections of fence so that they get even more territory. So special needs. Um, and there's, I think, seven in there. And then the barn... So what do we have? Then we're keeping track. We're at like 175 or something like that. The barn has another 150-ish, I think. And so every morning we let them out. We're all ready to go. And they have the run of the place. So there's the rooster. Like okay, right there. Um, he kind of keeps an eye on his ladies. He does a really good job. He, uh, he'll he make a call or whatever, and they all know. They'll hear it and they'll come run and hide inside if there's aerial predators or anything like that. Um, but they can basically roam wherever they want on the farm here. Um, yeah. They usually don't stray too far, but, but they'll go around the other side of the building or... Up by the house, it's pretty funny when you're eating lunch just to see a chicken walk by on the patio. Um, you can see there. See? Something changed, and so they all go to explore. Because um, I moved that trailer up on the path. I'll show you what we're going to do with that in next. So we have two of these best nest nesting racks. I think that's what they're called. And then we have the, the ones that I built over there that they prefer. Um, I mean, these ones are fine, there's nothing wrong with them. But then they also lay eggs in the corner because they're terrible listeners. But for food, let me show you this. So we got these, um, it's basically PVC that's curved and these are 50 or 55 gallon tubs and they like to roost on top. And then you just fill it with feed and then you can refill these I think we do it once a week. We'll go through and, and refill them. And they've got their favorite, so you can tell. Um, if they eat more out of this one, they prefer this one over this one. It doesn't really matter. We don't really understand why they have preferences. Um, but let's say there. So then they've got their waters. And uh, we gave them a little bug zapper because the worms are over there. And so if there's any flies or whatever that make their way over this way, we can um, get them zapped and they'll have a little snack. So, so yeah. You see, they'll hang, some of them will hang by the door because they know they're gonna be, they, they usually lay their eggs in the morning. Um, so they wanna stay close to the nesting boxes so they can drop them, but drop them in there. Um, but they'll lay them anywhere. So we find them under, we have stuff piled up from the garden over here or they'll lay them wherever they feel protected is essentially what happens. And sometimes accidents happen and they'll just lay them where they are. Um, so we do kind of an Easter egg hunt at night when we put everybody away um, to make sure that they are, there are no eggs out and about um, because predators will find them and then they will know that there's food here and we wanna 
we want to put an end to that. So, so there you go. So that's how we go through 50 to 75 pounds a day of feed between the pasture chickens, the chickens in the garage and the brooder, and the chickens here. The coop chickens, they probably get fed every other day because they have we have two feeders in there, and there's only seven chickens, so it takes forever for them to get through food. Um, so they don't go through that much, but yeah. And then we save money by letting them forage in the yard here, or they'll go in. The cows are just down there um, at the end, and so they'll go in there and explore. Or out in our woods, there's woods behind the barn here that they, one of the, one of the woods. Nope, she was biting her. Well, that was mean. Pecking order, it's important. They need to know who's the top hen. Um, we try and stop that. Now see, here's the rooster coming by to assert his dominance to the fight. So, so yeah, no chores are done for the morning. Well, chores are for chickens are done for the morning. Now we need to do dogs, cats, pigs, and cows, but that's chickens. All right, thanks for watching. We hope to see you all next time. Um, like and subscribe for more. All right, take care. Bye. Come here, buddy. I saw it too. Come here, buddy. <laughs>